Hi guys, in this video we are going to look at inheritance in C++. I think it's the first time we're going to cover that topic, but it's going to be very easy and very straightforward. Okay, so let's get into it uh, right away. What they uh, are showing us here, we, we're going to create two classes in this hacker rank challenge. The first one is going to be a class called rectangle, and it's going to have two member variables, and they are both of int type because they are integers. So they're going to be called width and height. And then in that class, we're going to have a method called display, and we're going to use that method to print the width and the height of the rectangle separated by space. So uh, it's going to be something like uh, like this, I think. And then we're going to have a rectangle area class, and that class is going to be derived from the rectangle class. So you see inheritance, but when you use inheritance in C++, you have a base class, in this case it's rectangle, and then you have a derived class, which is rectangle area. So the rectangle area class is going to inherit the member variables from the rectangle class if we set them to protected for the um, access specifiers. And in previous videos, I've shown you two access specifiers so far on this channel. They were um, public and private. But we have another one called protected, and we're going to use that in this video. Now, uh, we are also going to inherit the uh, public display method in rectangle area because it's a direct child of the rectangle class. And uh, our rectangle area class is gonna, um, is gonna have a read input method and it's also going to overload the display method. Now when we say overload, it means it's going to maintain the uh, method's name or the signature, but it's going to change the functionality. So in this case, uh, here in the rectangle class, we uh, need to print the width and the height separated by space in the display method. But in the rectangle area class, we need to change that functionality so that whenever we call the display method on the rectangle area objects in our program, we are rather going to print the area of the rectangle, width and height. Okay, so just again, if we call the display methods on a rectangle object, we are going to display the width and the height of the rectangle separated by space. If we call that same display method but on the rectangle area objects, we are going to display the area of the rectangle. So um, they are giving us uh, a sample input here and uh, this is going to be the output. So we are going to print width and height, and then we are going to print the area here. And you can see this in the uh, in the logged code area, uh, in the log code here. Uh, we have our main function, and then we are going to declare a rectangle area object, which means, and we are going to create an instance of the rectangle area class. Then we are going to call read inputs from that object. Then we are going to print. Uh, the width and the height on that same rectangle area object, but we are going to um, call the display method on it. Now notice here what it's uh, what we are doing. We are calling display, but we have this thing right here, rectangle. So we have rectangle area, which is our object. Then we have dot rectangle display. Remember in one of the previous videos, I talked about namespaces, and we were using like. Um, I think we created a function called um, to string. Let me open Notepad. I think in the previous video we had a function like this, I think, and we had to define that. That was our function, our own function. But we, at some point, I also said I wanted to use the to string method from the std namespace in the standard library. So I used something like this inside of the definition of that method, right? What I wanted to do was convert any int that I pass that function to a string so that I can use it uh, in different parts of my program. So by adding this, I was calling the toString method from the std namespace and not my own toString method from whatever class I was, I was creating. So this is kind of the same thing we are having here. We are calling the display method defined in the rectangle class right here. That serves as a namespace. But when we just call it directly on our rectangle area objects, then we are calling the display method that we have overloaded. So I hope that is not too confusing for you. If you have any um, trouble understanding this, please just uh, leave a comment. I'm going now to start writing the codes. Please follow along. Uh, I'm going to go uh, not too slow, but not too fast. So we type class rectangle. 
And instead of writing private like we did, oops, let me first fix the uh, spacing, add the semicolon here. Instead of having private like we did in previous videos, now I'm going to have protected. And then public. So in here, we're going to have our constructor, method, and stuff like that. In protected, I'm going to have int, the width, and the height. They are both um, integers. And I'm going to have my constructor, rectangle constructor. And although we are not required to, let's uh, initialize our member variables to zero. Just good practice. And now let's create a parameterized constructor. So I'm going to have rectangle like this, but this time around, I'm going to have int w, int h, and we can actually do something like this, right? Uh, height is equal to h, that would be valid. But there's another way of doing that, and I think uh, it's great if you know it, is it works like this. You also initialize your member variables, but you use that style. So you say width is equal to that w here, and then height will be equal to that h right here. And then we can have empty brackets. Okay, now we're going to have a virtual method that we can overload it in our rectangle area derived class later on. And that is going to be the display uh, function. So it's a void, a void method. Making so many mistakes today when I'm typing, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully you can still follow along. And see out, and we're going to display exactly like they want us to, just like that. So we're going to have width, then space, and then height, like that. And let's add end line so that we move to the next line. Okay, so I think we are done with our rectangle class. Now let's work on the uh, derived class, which is rectangle area. So again, we're going to have class rectangle area. I think that is how we need to call it, yes. And we are going to say it is derived from this, the rectangle class, so publicly derived. Rectangle, that's how you work with inheritance in C++. Now we don't need any member variable in, um, in that, uh, in that class, we are just going to have public, and in here, I'm going to have an empty constructor. And then I'm going to have my read inputs method, which is this one right here. Now, um, I'm going to use a previous um, strategy that I used in, um, you know, in one of my old videos, uh, where I use a string stream object. Now, I don't know why they, they have logged the, um, the top of that section here in the code editor, but I'm still gonna go ahead and add a string. Now, I'm going to, to say void, read inputs. We don't need any parameters for that. And I'm going to, first of all, have an, a, a string, a variable. And then because what they, they want us to do is accept input that is separated by space, we can't use C in like this, right? C in one variable and another C in because it's gonna be a you know line by line. If we want to accept input that is made up of uh, multiple words, for instance, and separated by spaces, it's a good way to um, accept or read the entire line. And for that, we use get line. I think I covered that in one of my previous videos. So it is going to read the entire line. It doesn't matter if the user enters like ten space five space hundred space whatever. We're going to read the entire line. Next up, I'm going to use I input string stream. I'm going to call that SS and initialize it with S. Um, maybe I should call that user input just to be a bit uh, clearer. Now that we have this, I can simply say SS. We know we are having only two uh, numbers here in the inputs. So I can have SS. The first thing is we're going to read and store into width and then read and store into height. And I covered how this works in a previous video. So please go back and make sure you check my videos on the string stream class. Okay, now that we are done with that method, 
I can go in here and say um, void display, work on our display uh, methods right here. And the reason why I'm able to sort of redefine that um, method right here is because I have virtual right there, uh, which is a good way whenever you want to overload your methods uh, from a base class to a derived class, it's a good way to have that. So um, display is going to see out the width uh, and times the height, because we need to uh, return or print rather, we need to print the area of the rectangle. So we use the uh, area formula, which is width times height. And I believe we are done now. We don't have any errors. Let's run this code and make sure that everything is working fine. Yep, and we pass the first test case. Let's submit this code, make sure that we pass all the test cases, and we just did. So I hope this video was clear enough for you. Please make sure you, you can rewind it, go back, try it on your own. Uh, if you have any questions, again, drop a comment below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please make sure you subscribe to support this channel. Turn on your notifications by uh, clicking the bell icon, and I will catch you next time. Bye.